to the Planning Analytics Deep Dive, where we explore the depths of planning analytics one dive at a time. Today, I'm joined by my colleague, Steve Waterbury, and we're going to be diving into something a little different today. We're going to look at uh, Watson X AI integration with IBM Planning Analytics. Um, if you caught the last video uh, we recorded here for the Deep Dive series, we talked about that from kind of a business perspective, giving you the high level overview, 30,000 foot. Today, we're going way deep dive here with Steve. We're going to show some practical examples of this in action with some stuff that Steve developed. Um, so I guess without further ado, perhaps we'll just jump right in. Um, sure. So yeah. th thanks, thanks for having me today, uh, Andrew. I, I appreciate it. So just to give you a little bit of background here as I pull up my screen. So I saw your video on uh, ChatGPT and I got, uh, I guess you could say jealous. Um, I thought that, you know, maybe I could do something similar to with Watson because I know Watson's a powerful tool and, uh, you know, I, I'm a planning analytics, IBM stack guy. So I wanted to go and play around a little bit. So what I have right here is I'm in uh, planning analytics workspace. Um, I'm in a little bit of a demo model here. So there's not a lot of data here, uh, but I got a little P and L for 2022, 2023 and 2024. Um, and what I've done is I've built this little interface here where I can start asking questions and pass both the question as well as the data from my financial planning and analysis system into Watson X.AI, run it against an LLM and get some uh, some data back from my uh, from from the AI. You want to you give it a try? Yeah, absolutely. All right. Let's see. Let's um, uh, what are the trends in my data? Right. Common question that everybody likes to ask. Click the button. So now it's going to run. And uh, what this is actually doing is it's taking uh, the question that we have here, it's pulling the data out of TM1, and then it's passing the question and as well as the related data and other context that we may have around this question back up to the LLM in WatsonX.ai, um, and then it's going to return us the response from the LLM. So um, everything you just saw happen live in real time, so that's the amount of time that it takes to go and, and crunch it, and then we get this little response here from uh, from the AI showing, you know, some trends that we see within our data. Yeah, something that a human would have to go in and write out by hand, right? So it's given us what, you know, I see as a pretty accurate summary based on the data that we've got up here. Um, yeah. And I mean, that was a pretty general question. And it's sort of similar to what we've queried, you know, chat GPT in the past, right? But this is actually going to, like you said, into the IBM stack and doing kind of a similar thing. So we're using, you know, full Watson capability here, right? Watson AI for all of this kind of stuff, but it's still in this sort of governed environment um, and talking directly to planning analytics, which is awesome, right? So yeah. you've asked it, what are the trends in my data? You know, high level. Why don't we try to ask it something a little more, I don't know, dig into the weeds a little bit. Let's ask it what the trends are for maybe a specific account or maybe get some kind of uh, sales, sales. Sure. Let's dig into sales. Everybody cares what, about sales. What are the trends in my revenue data? Right. Now it's going to go off. It's going to do exactly the same thing. Only this time with specifically the revenue information and let's, okay. let's see what it says. Sure. And this is all, I mean, obviously, like you said, using uh, Watson, but, you know, it's similar kind of construct in the back end technically to what we did with the chat GPT example, right? So yeah. we're leveraging, yeah, similar sort so, of. So one of the powerful things within Watson is its integration of multiple different LLMs. I know you spoke about that in a previous video. Um, yeah. In this case, we're using, the one that I'm using right now is IBM's Granite model. Okay. Um, and the underlying granite model allows us to ask questions and query some data. And so you look in here and it's given us, you know, a pretty, pretty reasonable, um, uh, you know, response here for my revenue. I have some formatting stuff that could get cleaned up here. Right. But, um, you know, this is some, a lot of analysis that you would have, you know, have a junior analyst or something like that doing that's been generated for you. Exactly. Well, yeah. And I mean, spitting out a lot more yeah. detail here too. Okay. So this is good. And like you said, junior analyst kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, interesting. And what we've, you know, it's sort of seen, you know, us do, like we said in the past, what do we, you know, do we have another example, perhaps maybe something different than this that we can show? Yeah. Us? Yeah. So let me show you. So I've, I've gotten a similar type of thing here. Um, same, same view, right? I'm looking at the, the same view here. Um, but what I want to do is I want to see like, all right, well, 
can I generate some things that maybe I might use as starting points or even final points for my 10K or my 10Q, right? So one of the common ones that's out there is your, you know, your disclosures, right? Your disclosure statement. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to come in and I'm going to ask it, um, write me a disclosure statement for 2023, right? So I'm in 2023. That means 2024 would be forward looking. 2022 would be all actuals, right? Um, and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to run this up against the LLM um, and it's going to return, uh, hopefully, something that is, uh, you know, pretty close to an accurate disclosure statement here. It's interesting. You know, I remember doing project back in the day with uh, Cognos Disclosure Management, which I think mm -hmm. was in certain for a while. And there was, like, you know, a whole tool that you had to develop to kind of spit out certain narrative bits of, and it was somewhat simplistic, at least at the time that I had used it, it was kind of doing a lot of lifting to kind of get you uh, favorable versus unfavorable variance commentary, things like that. Yep. And, and so in this case, it uh, it's uh, written me something about disclosure. So maybe we can try and tweak this a little bit. Sure. Write a disclosure statement for 2023 based on my data. Obviously, writing a disclosure statement, a little bit more of a, uh, a heavy lift, you know, than what a junior analyst would do and something that, you know, I think would save quite a bit more time in, a, you know, practical use. Yes. So there you go. This one's much, much more realistic, right? So if I expand this out, what you'll see here is we've got some details here and it's actually taken into account some of the transitions. For example, we're moving to a remote workforce post COVID in, is in here. Um, you know, which caused us some uh, reduction in occupancy costs, you know, statements around our accounting principles using GAAP and all of these other things that may uh, that may actually be useful in generating this out. So very, very quickly, I have at least a starting point to be able to, you know, build out my my 10K uh, MDNA statement. Right. And a starting point, because, I mean, right now we're just leveraging the data that we saw in our planning analytics cube, but we could, yep. of course, expand this to include all kinds of other data that we would then further train this interface on. Right. Yeah, absolutely. And, and in this case, I've I've taken and I've trained this model with um, sort of very generic MDNA structure, but based on a company's individual um, needs for their disclosure statements within their 10K or their 10Q, um, the model can be, you know, trained on what those are and provide a similar, uh, you know, structure, a language, everything else around um, a, the specific customer that is using this. Right. Right. We could be ingesting their previous 10Ks, 10Qs, using that as a foundation yep. as well. Right. So, exactly. yeah, I can see the power to expand this quite a bit. Yep. Awesome. Awesome stuff. Um, I think we had one more even to show folks too, right? Oh, yeah. Yes, we do. And this one is actually my favorite. So. Okay. I don't know about you, but you know, I've been doing this for a very long time. And one of the very, very common questions I've been asked throughout my career is how do I get detailed text-based information brought up to the top so I can see my consolidated organizational view, um, but also understand all of the things that have happened, you know, and, and has been entered into a planning analytic system, whether it's bridging from versions to versions or variance analysis or whatever, right? Traditionally, one of the ways you had to do that is it's been kind of hunt and pack, right? So over here, I have a variance view here showing what's what's been going on sort of within my organization across the world. And so if I go down to Massachusetts, you know, I go down and I want to look at stuff I can, you know, hunt and pack, right? And I can find some explanations of why things have changed, right? So in this case, my employer taxes have decreased, right? But really, what would be really awesome is if I can actually pull this up and generate that statement so that I can understand the context of what's happened at the detail level with while seeing the top level data, right? So consolidating my comments. So what I built here is the ability to do that by leveraging the power of AI. So I'm gonna click on this and what's happening now is it's going through, not the view that you see here, but the underlying detailed data from all of the different parts of the organization, taking in those explanations and it's going to analyze those and provide back to us the sentiments, the themes, and sort of the summary of what the organizational has described and what's going on at the detailed level in order to raise that up to me so I can understand what is actually happening, what my lines of business, my business user managers are actually, um, are actually seeing on the ground. So if I pull this up now that it's completed, 
So what you can see in here is it's actually identified, you know, specific spots where those uh, explanations were input, right? The employer taxes here, right? And have mentioned it, right? We saw that Massachusetts employer taxes, it's because of a reduced reduction in headcount, which reduced that, right? And apparently there's other things that happen here. Um, maybe if we dove into this a little bit de more detail, we would see, in fact, Michigan lost two sales reps. So our revenue is down as our, our salaries and other things, right? So it's built this up as opposed to me having to go hunt, peck, or dive into the weeds to try and figure this out. It's done all of that work for me. And right, you're still decentralized, you know, in terms of collecting the commentary, all of the folks that are on the ground in the place where the actions are happening are doing their jobs and putting that commentary in, but then you're able to programmatically using this AI go through and not only collect it all and aggregate it, but analyze it and summarize it, right? To make it something that's the executive summary of something like this. Yeah, so that exactly. is powerful. Exactly right. Well, so this is really cool, right? But but I have some things that are in the pipeline now around doing the same I'm type of sure thing you do. With, with like social media data, right? So pulling okay. in sentiment on product analysis and stuff from the, the broader world, or as you mentioned earlier, third party data sources, sure. pulling all of that in, leveraging your forecast as well as your actual data to be able to get a more broad view and sort of a context-based view of what's going on with your business at any given point in time. You know, yeah, that's interesting because I had, a, you know, someone asked me recently about pulling in um, sentiment uh, of analyst recommendations for certain stock tickers, right, to help mm -hmm. drive, you know, their forecast. So I could imagine you could do something like that with sentiment analysis as well. So interesting stuff. I think we're going to probably have to invite you back on here to uh, show that once that's ready for, uh, for a little demo. Anytime, Andrew. Excellent. Well, this is fun. Um, it's really good to actually, you know, dig into the weeds again. I mean, it's great to talk about that stuff from a high level, but to actually really see it in action. Um, so exciting stuff. And, you know, the CubeWise team is working on all kinds of stuff like this. We have a couple of events coming up. Even there's one this week um, in Chicago at Innovate Chicago. We're going to be talking about this. Um, you know, Steve and I are going to be at uh, Tech Exchange in October in Las Vegas. We'll be talking about this and many other uh, planning analytics topics that are, you know, top of mind for for you all and for us. Um, but yeah, I mean, this is this has been really fun. Thanks, Steve, for for joining us on this deep dive. Um, thank you all for the time as well. Um, and yeah, stay tuned to this space for more on this kind of stuff. Um, and yeah, until next time, keep doing good, TM One. <laughs>